All right, how about all these people here on stage that grew up in this area, and they're back to encourage you. Let's give them a hand. They're all in your program, so if you want to follow along, I will read. All right, Jocelyn Ayers is coming, I believe. She is from the U.S. Naval Academy. Matt Barr from Kenton and Kent State University. You can just raise your hand. There. Thanks, Matt. Good job. Sean Boley from Salina, University of Toledo Baseball. Uh, Bryden Davis from Allen East, Ohio Northern. Zach Dysert from Ada and the Dolphins. He is on his way, I think. Clark Etzler from Elida and now at Mount Union. Noah Furbush from Kenton and University of Michigan football. Do we have any comments for that? I don't know. There you go. You got a blue. He's the bright one on stage, the bright yellow, in case you didn't know. Uh, Ivy Horn from Waynesfield Ocean and Ohio State University. Uh, Miss Nick Hager from Wapakoneta, uh, Bowling Green, St. Mary's assistant football coach. We have Morgan Horn from Waynesfield and Tiffin University. Taylor Jones from New Bremen, University of Maryland, and Duquesne for volleyball. Uh, let's see. Trent Long from Elida plays at Bluffton University. Reggie McAdams from Elida. University of Akron Basketball, Brent Miller, uh, Wapakoneta High School wrestler and West Virginia University, Kyle Miller from Elida, and four different NFL teams, the Colts, the Falcons, the Dolphins, and the Chargers, Mark Miller from Canton South High School and also an NFL quarterback with the Browns and the Packers, uh, Abby Norton, I put Steck Schulte for those of you who remember her Columbus Grove days, uh, West Virginia University and Indiana as well, Sam Prakel from Versailles and the University of Oregon, we have it, Jared Pugsley. Uh, for the second straight year, I've called him a tight end. And I think he'd catch a lot of touchdowns, don't you? So we've got to put him there on that extra, extra spot. He is an offensive lineman for the Chiefs and new to the bidding block. Our silent auction's going on back there. And he uh, gave us a football signed by about half the Chiefs, including the entire offensive line. He wanted to make sure we knew that. So we thank Jared for that. You can start bidding tonight. Uh, Carly Sammons from Wapakoneta, the Bowling Green State University FCA president. Stephanie Sanders from Bath, played at Michigan State, now a coach at Saginaw Valley State. Clint Spencer from Shawnee, uh, Mount Vernon Nazarene, baseball player, Lima Loco, and a real estate agent. If you're in the house for buying or selling, call Clint. <laughs> Does a great job. Uh, Colby Spees. Colby, are you here? From Wayne Trace and at Bluffton. Hopefully he's coming. Leslie Stolle from Shawnee High School and University of Akron Golf. Uh, Jordan Thompson from Parkway High School, an NFL tight end with the Lions. Keith Wenning from Coldwater, a Cincinnati Bengals quarterback. And Caleb Williams from New Bremen High School, played at Mount Vernon Nazarene uh, for basketball and currently at UNOH as an assistant coach. Thank you to these folks. Thank you to you for being here as well. You guys can go have a seat. And with that, I'm going to welcome our title sponsor. I uh, got a hold of the U.S. Plastics Corporation, I think it was last year. Maybe in the fall, Nate Pullman, who runs the WBL Sports, NWC Sports website, NWCC. I think he added track sports. Uh, he got a hold of our, we got a hold of each other, and he said we want to be a part of this in a big way. And so they sponsored the entire weekend, which has made us able to invite all of you here to pay for your meals. We have other table sponsors as well, but they made it possible. And so we want to thank Katarina Hinkel and U.S. Plastics Corporation for their sponsorship. Well, good evening. It's a little intimidating to have a room full of so many athletes. I'm like, do I even work out today? It's like, ah! Anyways, it's a great pleasure to see you all again. My name is Katerina Hinkle, and I have the privilege of working at U.S. Plastic right here in Lima. And on behalf of our leadership and all of our employees, we just want to say how proud we are to partner with the District 8 FCA along with TV44 and WOSN. Now, you may know us as the business along I-75, the one with the huge sign that says Christ is the answer, kind of stands out. And we also have a long row of flags right out front as well. Now, early on in our business, our founder, Dr. Tam, he actually decided to give 100% of the ownership of the company to God. And so that explains a little bit our sign. So while it's our business, to manufacture and then distribute quality plastic products. Really our mission is that we want to provide as many resources as possible for ministry around the world. 
And in fact, one of our core values is to think big. We believe that God can do the impossible and that he can really make a lasting difference in the lives of people through our company. And so whether it's here in the community, through an event like this, or around the world, we believe God can do it. And so those flags outside our building, they represent just some of the countries that have been touched by our company. A second core value is that we share the hope. And now a company like ours that's founded on the teachings of Jesus, we want to bring God's message of life and hope to as many people as possible. And just like our sign says, we actually believe that Jesus is the answer to our broken world. So it makes sense when you think of those two values, think big and share the hope, that we would partner with someone like FCA, District 8 FCA. And we're just so grateful for the work that they're doing here in this area with young people and helping them to grow and succeed, not just in sports, but really in life overall. And so we truly hope that you enjoy this evening, that you're encouraged and inspired. Thank you. Thank you. And don't forget this before you leave, Katerina, because I don't need the plastic bin in my house. But we used it for the golf outing. You had to try and get it in, I think. And I didn't golf for good reason. Um, we're, who's ready to eat? Lock 16, right here. These guys are excited. I like it. Lock 16, uh, once again, our food sponsor for this evening. And so I'm going to pray, and then we have a routine. So this is a team-building exercise. It came with your team, some of you. First thing you're going to do is go, well, first thing, they're going to release you. So stay at your table till they come and release you. Then when your team is released, you go to the wall over here where Dean Brown, our photographer, who's on his way, yeah, is going to take your picture uh, of your table. Then you get in line for the food. Uh, the lines are that's, that side or that side? Where do we start? You'll figure it out. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for this evening. Thank you for all of the athletes, students, uh, adults in this room. Uh, we thank you that you're the giver of all good gifts. And you've given us all gifts that we can either use or not use in this life. Uh, help us just to say thank you for those gifts tonight. Thank you for this food. Pray that you're blessed to our bodies. In Jesus' name, amen. We have some legends at some of the tables with high school teams. If you are a legend at a table... I want you to share a funny story from college sports with your table, a little icebreaker. We're FCA, so we do icebreakers. Not me in particular. I make you do them. So have fun. We will start the program with Sam, who is fresh from the Olympic trials. Give him a hand. All right, well, you and I were tweeting earlier this year, and you're like, I think I might be able to make it back. And then I saw you had such a good year at Nationals, what, finished fifth in the 1500. Yep. Is it working? Testing? Yeah, there you go. I think it's on. All right. So I didn't think you were going to come back because you, you're busy. <laughs> you're running. You made it to the, the yeah. you know, we'll Actually, talk about that. got in yesterday, um, <laughs> yesterday evening, so made it back just in time. Happy to be here. And you didn't run. Up I didn't the... run. I'm on my break now, so it's okay. nice to kind of take some downtime. Awesome. Leah, can you do his mic, put it up a little bit, or Kayla? It's not your fault. <laughs> so tell us first about Oregon. You go to this place that's far northwest. You know, we've seen the stadium for track and field. We've seen the, the football uniforms. What's it like out there? Oh, it's, it's awesome. Um, just a couple months before my freshman year there, I was really, really scared, though. I didn't really know what to expect. Um, I th didn't think I was fast enough to run there. I knew it would take a lot of work to kind of climb the ladder in, in, on the team, but um, after a couple years, I've, I've found my, my place on the team, and it's been, it's been such a joy running for one of the best uh, track, track and field programs in the nation, and um, some of the best coaches, and some of the best, some of, some of the best teammates, and um, it's definitely taken a lot of um, faith and trust in God to guide me along that, that path, kind of removed from my comfort zone for a little bit, but um, it's, it's definitely been worth it, um, kind of running for such a historic school. Yeah, well, one of my favorite 
quotes from you. It was your senior year. You said, I like to just go run through nature. And that's where you connect with God. Some yeah. good nature out there in Oregon. Some, some great nature. Um, that's, that's one of our kind of best features of the campus is we have all of these trails um, within running dis distance of our track. So we meet at the track for practice and then we can run half a mile or a mile to some of these wood chip trails or these trails that go up into these hills and along these, these ridges and um, just in the forest to kind of that's where I connect with God still to this day, like just like I did in high school. Unreal. So take us through that trial process. You had to, you had to get under a certain time to have a chance to get to the Olympic trials. Yeah, that so was quite the process. Starting my outdoor season, I knew I had a certain number of races to, to hit this Olympic trials qualifying time. And what is that? Um, it was 338. And that's not I, like one lap. That's that's three laps and three quarters. So okay. almost almost a full mile wow. is, is the fifteen hundred. Is what we run in college now. Um, and I ran three forty five times throughout the regular season, and I had to run three thirty eight. So that was kind of frustrating. But I knew I was in three thirty eight shape. So after NCAA's, I decided to, I had two more shots. Um, one meet we had in Seattle, and then the next meet would be in Portland. Um, I drove drove up to Seattle, and it was really windy, so no one really ran fast. And I ran three forty again. Um, which was a little frustrating. And then five or six days later, I ran a meet in Portland, and it was pouring down rain. Um, so I knew it probably wouldn't happen there, and I ran 340 again. Um, so that was my seventh time running 340. And then I thought my season was over. Um, I remember texting my mom, like, I wanted to cry. I really wanted to make the trials this year, and it just wasn't going to work out because um, it was my goal ever since coming to Oregon to run in the trials because it only happens once every four years, and it would be cool to run on the home track and everything. Um, but then the next morning, I heard of a last chance meet being set up at Oregon State, uh, which is just 45 minutes north of Eugene. Um, that was on the very last day that you could hit one of the qualifying times. And I knew it was only two or three days away, so I'd still be tired from my Thursday race. Um, but I'd signed up for the meet and um, drove up to Oregon State. It was much better weather. We had a, a, a good pacer for the race and I ended up running 338 to hit the time to qualify for the trials, um, which would be just five days later. So it was really kind of a last minute thing. And I remember the race went off at 8.30 and the deadline to enter your time was at nine. So I finished the race and then I called my coach right away and said, change my time because I think I just qualified for the trials. Um, so there was kind of a, a nerve wracking couple weeks there trying to hit the time, but I ended up doing it in the very last minute. And then you made it to the corner finals, made it onto the semifinals. Mm -hmm. What was that whole atmosphere like for the trials? It was a different. I'm, I live a couple blocks from the track and go there every day for practice, but biking down to the meet the day of my race, I was kind of disoriented. They have this festival set up. I couldn't really get into the track the same way I was used to, so it took a little bit of, um, I had to calm myself down before I stepped on the starting line. But once I got to the starting line, I think my, my natural instincts took over and I was able just to clear my mind and, and race like I did. I raced, I think I raced the 1500 12 or 13 times in the season, so I just kind of knew what I had to do once the, once the gun went off and um, ended up getting, I think, fifth place in my quarterfinal. And then I, I placed six in the semifinal, which was one spot away from qualifying for the final. So I was a little dejected after that race, but I think looking back on it now, I'm, I'm happy with how I did. And I would have run the exact same race if I had to do it all over again. A lot of high school athletes here, some college athletes as well. How has your faith in God grown into college? Uh, it's, it's grown immensely. I've had to put a lot more trust in God, um, especially I think this year. I had a lot of um, hurdles to jump over during the regular season. You're I, hurtling now. I'm not hurting. Yeah, okay. not, not figuratively hurtling. Um, Thought we had a new story. Yeah, new okay. story. No, no, no. Not, not starting the steeplechase quite yet. <laughs> um, but early in the regular season, I got food poisoning um, pretty bad, so that made me miss a couple, a couple workouts. And then I had some some tendonitis in my feet, which set me back. So I think every, every time I hit one of those, they really ultimately didn't affect me in the end, but I think that's due to a lot of the, the prayer and faith I had in God. And um, I told him that if, if you help me get through this and help me to achieve my goal of qualifying for the trials, I'll run for you and I'll, I'll, I'll do everything for you. All right, well, thanks for running up here for yeah. him as well. We appreciate it. No Sam problem. Prankle, Thank everybody. You. Thanks, Sam. All right, next we'll bring up a couple of our NFL guys, Jared Pugsley from Alima Senior and the Kansas City Chiefs, taking one more swig of that good lemonade, and Keith Wenning from Coldwater, and now the Cincinnati Bengals. We got a lot of Bengals fans here. What do we say? Half Bengals, half Steelers, right? Tim Goodwin's here. I always have my Steelers fan in the back there. Here's Keith and Jared. That's loud. Just pick one of those. Okay. 
All right, well, how's, uh, how's camp going? Camp's done. You're getting ready for, for August. Keith, let's start with you. Been a good summer? Yeah, it's been, it's been really good. Um, I actually just got back from San Diego yesterday. I uh, was out there training the last couple weeks um, with some other, other quarterbacks and NFL guys, so my summer's gone by way too fast, but um, it's been a good one. Andy Dalton goes down with an injury last year. Did you know right away you'd be promoted from the practice squad onto the 53-man roster or NFL? You know, they could pick somebody up. What was that process right. like for you? I mean, you never know in, in, in that situation. Um, you know, being, being in that offense and going throughout the year and our, our relationship that we had or we still have in, in our quarterback room, you know, the constantly bouncing ideas off each other and, and with our, our coaches and stuff like that, I felt confident that they were going to promote me uh, to active uh, roster and um, going through the week, it, it came to that Tuesday and, you know, as quarterbacks came in and our offense coordinator pretty much told me, you know, you're going to be active. It's not going to be said, but uh, you're going to be active. And that Wednesday when we came in for practice, I went up and signed and was moved active the last last five games of the season. What did that feel like? It was unbelievable. Yeah. Um, you know, first off, any job you have in the NFL, it's, it's a blessing. You know, it's not guaranteed. It's you never know where you're going to be. You know, uh, I always tell myself and uh, my family, it's, you know, God has a plan. And, and every single person, you know, from me, from him, from you, from, from everybody. So a job in the NFL, <clears throat> excuse me, a job in the NFL is, is a blessing first off. So, you know, just to be promoted and, and be on that 53-man roster is, is a great feeling. Talk about that quarterback room. A lot of faith in those other two guys as well as you. What's that like having two solid believers along with yourself in that, that room? Are there conversations of faith between Andy and AJ and you? Yeah, I mean, every, every day some, some sort of, uh, you know, situation will come up and, and something will be, you know, depending what it is, it, it comes up. Um, I was talking to my table earlier. Every Tuesday during the season, Andy actually has me and my wife and, uh, about 10 other couples to his house, and our team chaplain um, also is there, and we have a Bible study. Oh, wow. And it's, uh, it's kind of like a relationship study, a Bible study, and it's kind of just outside the football aspect of everything, and it's, it's more of like a, you know, you get the personal side of everybody, and you see where, you know, you're a lot more alike than you think. Mm -hmm. um, as far as uh, people's faith and, and what they believe and stuff, you see, you know, people open up, and, you know, you realize... Wow, we're not, we're not so much different after all. Jared, your journey to the, the NFL has been like your high school journey and your college journey from, from walk-on, from practice squad player uh, to the active roster. What was that feeling like for you this season? You, you made the practice squad full-time and then moving up and being signed uh, late in the season. Uh, kind of like Keith said, it's, it's a blessing. Like all of it is. Um, I was telling my table, uh, you know, every, like you were saying, every uh, level I've had to, kind of work from the bottom and it, it you know looking back on it that's such a blessing in itself because you're forced to be humble like there's no uh there's no place to be complacent at all so um you know going in uh to the season I was on practice squad which I was you know very grateful for and knew if I kept working you know there might there be a chance for me uh to get my opportunity and I knew I wasn't going to waste it so um I didn't know, but it was probably around the same time because it was probably uh, beginning of December was when I got uh, pulled up. So, uh, besides the point. Anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, when I, I got the call, when um, one of uh, one game, three offensive linemen went down in the same game, and you know, uh, my fiance uh, Miro was sitting by me. I was like. Wow, I might be active next week. <laughs> you don't root for injuries, but <laughs> no, you're thinking, you don't, yeah. you don't at all. And it's just <laughs> like, wow, like, uh, shoot, I might be active. And going into the week, uh, I had a couple coaches kind of hint at it, and a couple players were like, "Oh man, like, I know it's your time, like, you're gonna be up." And then I wasn't. And so <laughs> because a center went down and they needed to bring somebody else in, so um, so it was like my hopes got up, but then it was like I, I kept a level head and. You know, um, the following week after that, um, next week, I got pulled up. So it was all a blessing, like you said. Now, there's a, a budget rent a truck in the parking lot. We need someone to move that, whoever's. <laughs> You're moving tomorrow, right? Uh, actually, uh, my fiance and I are probably heading halfway to Kansas City tonight. And then 
finishing the drive tomorrow. So moving halfway across the country. But yeah. and, that, and that's a tough decision to make because, you know, you're hoping to make the active roster. You're hoping to, to get all that. But it's the NFL. You never know. Yeah, I mean, you never know. But, uh, you know, it's time to start our lives together. And <laughs> that's her She's right there, yes. that beautiful girl down there front. <laughs> I'm sorry, I love embarrassing her. Everybody look at her. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, you know, it, I, I'm I'm just excited um, to have this opportunity, and um, like I said, I'm, I'm ready to start this next chapter of my life. But uh, it, it's a grind, and that, like in everything you do, it's a grind. But uh, I'm feeling more confident than ever, and you know, whatever happens, you know, I know God has a plan for me. So. One of the ways that God's been using you is through the hometown Thanksgiving handoff last year. You and Kyle Miller uh, helped start it for Elida and for Lima uh, City Schools. We gave away 1,000 meals. We want to expand it this year. Just what did that feel like, even though you couldn't be here because you were <laughs> playing for the Chiefs? You know, what did that feel like to start that up and see it grow, hopefully, this year? Uh, it, was, it was really awesome. Um, again, another blessing. Uh, it, one thing that a lot of people told me uh, leaving once I got into the NFL was – Oh, just never forget where you came from. Never forget all this. And, you know, you know me. You've been knowing me since high school, and you know that I'm not the type to do that. But, you know, it's such a blessing to, you know, have have the opportunity to where you can help families like that, somebody who wouldn't normally get a meal on Thanksgiving. And, and it's one of those things you don't really realize that you helping that much until somebody random will come up. I remember I was at a Lima senior game after the season, and I was sitting in front of this uh, random couple that I didn't know, and they turned around and they were like, oh, you're Jared Pugsley. They said, uh, I just want to shake your hand and thank you for everything that you do for the kids around here. And it was just like, wow, thanks. I mean, uh, it, it, was just, it was just an awesome feeling. So, um, you know, I always rep Lima wherever I go. I, I have an I Heart Lima t-shirt, and I, I love wearing it. Everybody. Is it underneath that one? No, yeah, no, it's not. not <laughs> it's packed away in the budget truck. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I rep Lima wherever I go, um, and, you know, I, I do love Lima. So. Speaking of remembering where you're from, Keith, uh, we give away the John Reed Leadership Award at TV44 each and every year to a coach that exemplifies a lot of the same attributes of Coach Reed. Tom Geeskin, who originated the award, is here tonight uh, as well. The day that you got signed for the Bengals, I tweeted it out, was the day that we picked our John Reed winner. Did you think about Coach Reed when he got signed and what he would have said to you if he was still alive that day? No, my, my relationship with him was one that, you know, I don't think many people, you know, had the, those type of relationships with their coaches. Um, you know, I still, I still have his still there. rubber band. It's, it's gone since he, he passed away, yeah. his funeral, same one. Um, through college, through NFL, everything. Um, you know, he told me in, in high school, my junior year, I was be between base going baseball or football, and he said, you're going to play in the NFL someday. It was trusting God, trusting the plan. He goes, it's going to happen. And, you know, the day that I got drafted, you know, I, I, you know, I think of him, and, you know, every time I pray, I, I'm thinking of him. And, um, you know, going, going on the active roster, definitely, you know, it, it, was, it was him. I mean, it was everything he said came true. And it's, it's unbelievable, and it's, it's a miracle. Um, and, yeah, I mean, he was, he was a special person. All right. Keith Wan and Jared Pugsley. How about these Thank guys? You. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, sorry. All right, next up, we're talking coaching. we got a lot of coaches in the room. And speaking of which, as Nick Hager and Caleb Williams make their way up, come on up, guys. Let's have our coaches. They're legends too, right? So stand up, coaches, because you are a legend in our schools. Not for the bad reasons, but for the good reasons, because you're making a difference. So stand up, coaches. Come on, Coach Reiner. There we go. How about these guys and ladies? Just take two. These are a couple of the coaches I've gotten to know the last couple of years. Last year, I thought Nick's name was Nate. So we've gotten to know each other a little better. His brother's Nate, good swimmer at Wapak. Uh, we'll start with Caleb Williams. Uh, played at New Bremen. We've got a couple New Bremen tables here in the back. Played at Mount Vernon Nazarene. When did you know you wanted to be a coach? Uh, well, uh, my dad, who's in the house, um, has been a coach. So I lived with a coach uh, my whole life. Um, and, and I had always envisioned that was the route I would be and. You know, there were some things that happened. God worked in our life, and I got away from it for a little bit. But I could just never 
could never get that out of my mind of like, that's just what I knew I was supposed to do. And uh, one of my college coaches, uh, Mount Vernon, you know, we were talking about the future and he said, you know, you should coach college. And it just kind of clicked and, you know, he continued to work and provide things in my path that, that uh, just keep leading me into that. And, and so it's been a great blessing. So, Nick, I love your story of Bowling Green State University on the football team, but you knew you weren't going to get a lot of playing time. So you got some great coaching experience as a player. How did you take those guys under your wing at BGSU? Yeah, uh, like, like you said, I didn't get to play 80 snaps of football game. I just did special teams. So I was able to get on the field. Um, but a lot of those guys in spring ball, and any college football player in here knows spring ball, the coaches are there, but then the second practice is over. They're recruiting somewhere. And so we had two, the year we won this, uh, 2013, we had two kids that were going to start through a redshirt freshman. And Coach Dirk looked at me and said, you got to watch film with these two and make sure they're ready to go by uh, August. And come to it, they're going to be redshirt seniors this year. And they're both, um, I think one was first team, that was second team All-Mac players. And so, you know, how, how big of a part I played in that, you know, I'd like to think a little bit. But that's kind of where, you know, I, I wanted to be a coach for that. And then working with those guys, you know, then it, it, the ball definitely started rolling. Like, hey, I can actually do this thing. I can teach this stuff, not just do it. So that was really cool to be able to work with those two and, and see that, you know, come to fruition. Yeah, the mentoring aspect, taking part already. Then you went to Wapak, had a year there with the Redskins before switching sides of Ogles County and going to St. Mary's. You wore your blue today. Uh, been a good year getting into the coaching for you. We would just say getting used to the routine of being a teacher and a coach. You're, you're kind of getting used to it. Yep, in the year at Walt Park, I did my student teaching at Bath, and I see some Bath guys around here somewhere, so it was nice to get to know some league guys. Um, but the year at Walt Park, student teaching, I was kind of, you know, I wasn't coaching every day, so it was a nice place to get my feet wet. And this year it was, you're teaching math and you're coaching. And teaching math, you know, there's a lot there, and usually kids don't get it right away. So to balance teaching and with coaching and, you know, working with people as a teacher and then a coach and balancing all that, was uh, was really cool and you know you a, lot, a lot of prayer through that because you know there, there's a lot of kids looking up to you in that way um, but you know it was great Doug Fry is a wonderful head coach I love working for him uh, just mentors me all the time you know I just you know that whole group of guys coach Reams back there he's he's really good to me so I was able to come into a staff that really you know Doug said when I first got there you know these guys you being from Walpock being an outsider they may not take you in right away. <laughs> And, man, they just swarmed right around me and brought me in. And that probably made it easier than anything, knowing that all those guys had my back. And, you know, it was a really good environment to work in. St. Mary's with a, a couple of chaplains. Steve Stroh's here, and uh, another one's going to join the, the fold as well, Keith Jacobs. We started a coaches group uh, once a month, came down, showed some three-dimensional coaching video by Jeff Duke. What has that morning of your month meant to you? How, how has it helped you? Yeah, well, that morning also Steve Stroh would come in before liftings on Friday. So mm -hmm. Steve Stroh is going to be awesome yeah. to have around and talk to the guys. He came in, just talked to us coaches in a side room for five, ten minutes at, you know, 530 in the morning before we lifted. Wow. So we, we appreciate Steve. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but that coaching, the 3D, that was really cool just to see it broken down because some things we already did, you got to see on paper, and, you know, this is why it's effective. Yeah. And, you know, a few other things you could take away of, not being afraid to take a kid and really, you know, talk to him about how's life doing, you know, because some of these kids don't have anybody asking them, you know, how, how's life right now? You know, it's, it's all about X's and O's, but sometimes they need to just be asked, you know, how are you doing, you know. So. As FCA, we want to come alongside the coach. Uh, Leah and Arian, can you guys, back there are some coaching brochures. They're in the box there, Leah. If you can kind of pass them around. Carlina, if you want to help out too. Um, just coaches, if your coaches kind of slip your hand up, there's different ways that we want to help you, just equip you, uh, be in your life. Uh, I always say on Friday nights and, and for our volleyball teams, Thursdays and Saturdays and for, you know, other sports, whatever day it is, half the teams in the state win and the other half lose. And who's there for the coaches that, that lose? And even the coaches that win sometimes, they need some support. Sometimes only their spouse is the one that's on their side, sometimes not even their spouse. But we're not going to get into that part of it. So that was a joke, sorry. Um, so we're here for coaches, and so there's different ways we can do it, and other ones with one-on-one -on -one meetings, and I've had the pleasure of uh, having breakfast with Caleb. He, he's gotten me up early each, once a week. We meet over at Bob Evans, uh, and just talk life. I mean, how important is that to have someone in your life to do that? Oh, it's huge. Um, it's, it's been a great blessing to me, so I thank you for that, uh, especially for me 
you know, going through a transition. I've been at the University of Finley for the past two years and now trans transitioning here to Lima. Um, and just, you know, in the college spectrum, it, every university has its own little different things that, you know, you have to learn how to operate through. Um, and so not only going through that, but then going through, you know, being young and growing, growing up as a man and um, growing in my faith and, and just learning to live in a new place. Um, it's, it's huge to have someone you can walk alongside, you know, at 7 a.m. or 6, 6 a.m., whenever we meet. It depends on the week uh, with both of our schedules. But just to talk about, you know, different things and some just has been fantastic. So that's huge. Um, and I think as, you know, a coach, it's good for me to learn from you in that because that, you know, really is my role, um, whether it's taking a guy, you know, meeting him in the cafeteria or just sitting with him in a training room or pulling him aside in practice. You know, that's a big part of what I believe uh, my job is as a coach. So being able to have you in that uh, has been huge for me, and I think that's an important piece of my growth is having people like you that have walked alongside me in that. So Awesome. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks to all the coaches out there. Let's hear it for Caleb Williams and Nick Hager. All right, next up, we haven't forgot you ladies. We know there'll be female athletes in the audience, and so we wanted to have some, some talk to you. And so we'll bring up Ivy Horn from Ohio State, Abby Norton, Abby Steck Schulte when she was at Columbus Grove, and Stephanie Sanders uh, from Bath as well. So give them a hand. I like to compare what we're doing here tonight to Netflix. We're binge watching athlete stories. We're just watching, we get to the end of the next one, then we go to the next one and we're watching because there's so much here. We could have an entire night with just one or two of our legends, but they all uh, are back. Many are sitting amongst you and aren't gonna come up on stage, but they're here to encourage you and I just really uh, appreciate that. All right, we'll start with Ivy Horn in the middle, sorry. So Ohio State. Well, what was that like? You get to go to your dream university, run track and field? I mean, sorry, Stephanie. She's giving you a bad look down there. <laughs> Michigan State. <laughs> what was it like? Oh, sorry. Yeah, anyway. um, it was amazing. I think one of the coolest uh, parts of it was, I mean, for track and field, obviously, the state track meet is held at Jesse Owens Memorial Stadium, and that's, like, the big stage. And so I was so used to getting there and just thinking, like, wow, like, this is it, you know? Like, we're going to be competing for a state title or, like, individual titles and things like that. And then when I showed up for, like, fall training the first day, um, it was like, wow, this is just my home track now. <laughs> and it's just where practice is every single day. And then we would, uh, as a team, we would work the state track meets and just seeing, like, the high school athletes and how, I mean, they were, like, so focused. Like, this is, like, this is the big stage for them, like it was for me. And then it just being, like, a, my home track now, I don't know. I think that was a pretty cool transition to see that. For sure. What's God been teaching you throughout your college time? I, I was so, I've been incredibly blessed at Ohio State um, with what God's done in my life. Um, we have such a huge Athletes in Action, which is just um, kind of like FCA only at, at Ohio State. It's called Athletes in Action. And on my visit, um, Janelle Oberding, who is a distance runner from Fort Loramie, um, she was my host one night. And she uh, took, we went to dinner and she was like, when you come here, you're going to go to Athletes in Action with me. I was like, well, yeah. And so I went the first time, and I have made the best of friends from every single sport um, at Ohio State because of Athletes in Action. And we do so much. So like on um, two Fridays a night, we get together, and we pray, and we go do homeless ministry in downtown Columbus and hand out sandwiches oh, wow. and just talk to people about God. And I think that's one thing that um, it's challenged my faith because our leaders in Athletes in Action really encourage um, – just spreading your faith with other people. Yeah. And I think that's something where, obviously, um, when I was younger and in high school, that's something I would be really afraid about. Yeah. I'm just, you know, like just going up to anybody or just t like telling your story or your faith in Jesus Christ to anybody. Um, but getting there and getting to see like seniors on the softball team or the basketball team, like just going to downtown Columbus and like giving them food or a Bible and just like loving on people who you think are unlovable. Yeah. I think that's one thing that Ohio State taught me. I mean, in addition to athletics, it was just, um, um, getting a huge um, Christian friend group yeah. was amazing. Abby, last time we talked several years ago, you had just finished up the Olympic trials. Does conversation with Sam bring back some memories? 
Absolutely, and watching it all, yeah. you know, it was uh, the last week and a half, and it was very, it was, I had a lot of nostalgia <laughs> looking at back and, and, you know, watching, and people that I know still that are competing right now, it was really, really cool to be able to see that. Missed How, it a little bit. How's the transition been out of athletics into um, kind of a real well, world situation? Yeah, it's been easy because I have two little boys now, a two-year-old and a nine-month-old, um, so I kind of don't really have the chance to think about <laughs> the past <laughs> that much. They don't give you a chance. Yeah. No, no. But it's, I mean, it, it, it was cool, you know, the last week and a half to look back and really remember just the awesome experience that that was being at the trials and, um, yeah. As you look back uh, on how you grew in your faith through athletics, what would you say to some of the young ladies in the audience here today? Um, I think that, you know, track and field for me was a great way to kind of, um, you know, use it as a platform to share my faith with others. A big part of it was just the girls on the track team. I mean, they're coming from, and guys, they're coming from so many different walks of life. And to be able to come together and kind of have that one thing, you know, that everybody needs and that everybody wants, um, and to be able to share with them, I mean, lots of long bus rides and, you know, in airports and that kind of thing. So there's just so much opportunity to be able to use, you know, what we do here. And, you know, people look at athletes, they look up to athletes. I mean, yep. if you guys, you don't realize how much, um, you know, know, whether you want to be or not, you're leaders. And to, to be able to really use that, um, you know, the gift that God has given you to spread um, his love, it's, it's really cool. Stephanie Sanders is going to have some more long bus rides. You got some news for us, I hear. I did. I just found out yesterday, and I haven't even, I barely have gotten to talk to my parents about it because they've been gone. So I'm kind of celebrating. Should we call them first? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's all right. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just, uh, I got the job offer at Villanova yesterday. I got the, you know, so wow. I'm very excited. And wow. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, so very excited. And I mean, literally when I got the phone call, my brother was there. And I just, like, I, like, fell to my knees and honestly was just like, this is a dream. Like, it's a blessing. And, um, you know, it's a dream job for somebody my age. I'm 24. And, you know, I thought I was going to have to keep climbing from the bottom for a while and I mean to be at a, a university like Villanova um, it's just incredible and it's such a blessing and I'm so excited um, big change for my life and for my family you know being so far away um, and obviously division one level you know <laughs> a bigger commitment but um, I'm so ready for it and um, I'm ready to just take it on. So yeah, it's been quite a year. Last year you sat up here and you didn't know what your plans were uh, even going to be. You got a yeah. job at Saginaw Valley State. And yes, yes. So, uh, you know, it's just the coaching world I have come to find out is just very um, stressful. A lot of playing the waiting game. And, you know, it's like you just don't know where you're going to end up. And it's like, you know, I'm, I love softball and I love coaching. I love working with people. And I, I just want to, you know, I want to, I want to be at the best university at a Division One, you know, competitive school. And, you know, I had to kind of come, I was very spoiled, you know, playing at Michigan State, um, you know, kind of being in one of the best athletic departments in the country and, um, you know, going and coaching Division Two. It was just a big adjustment and um, it kind of brought me back down to earth. Like, you know, it's, it's humbling, you know, like I was so spoiled and, you know, I have to, I had to change. So I'm um, very eye-opening there and, I mean, you know, just once again, very blessed that this happened to me, and I still can't believe it. So, <laughs> Congratulations. Ivy, what's one last thing you want to leave uh, with the female athletes in the audience here tonight? Hmm. Um, I think just, I mean, for me personally, as I was saying earlier, just like the confidence and the boldness that I grew in my faith, hmm. um, just how important it is to spread your faith because you don't know if the person next to you is going to do it, and you never know who needs Jesus' love and who needs to hear the gospel and the good news. And um, just from uh, getting to go to mission trips, like I've been to Haiti on some mission trips, and I think like that was really cool, but it's like kind of different um, when you go to a country where they, they're very poverty and it's, you know, people are kind of 
hopeless, they want to hear the gospel. But in the United States, um, go up to a random person on the street and try to tell them about Jesus. They might have a bunch of money or a great job or anything in the world, and you know, if they, you might not think that they need to know it. But I think mine would just be um, being in the gospel, read Ephesians and Hebrews, where God tells us to go to his throne boldly and confidently and to tell other people about it. And I think that um, just from being in the word every day, um, you can get that confidence. And I know you guys are here, so you're in FCA. You know the gospel. You know the good news. Um, tell your friends about it. Tell everybody about it because it's the best thing that you could ever tell anybody. Awesome. Thank you. Abby Norton, Ivy Horn, Stephanie Sanders. All right. We're on to page two. And we're going to talk a little bit about relationships. We're, we're well-rounded this year. So Reggie McAdams and Leslie Stolly, come on up at the golf outing on Friday. Sandy Doan, a great golfer here in town, just had to look at Leslie's ring. And so I'm sure everyone will want to look at the ring as they come up. we got lots of engaged folks here. But give them a hand. Well, like seven or eight or nine years, I don't know how long it was, but I did a golf antic with the Shawnee Girls golf team, and then a few weeks later, I went and did a half-court shot and missed with Reggie, because he had hit like several in a short span or something. You probably remember all of them. And, and Reggie says to me, hey, did you do an antic with the girls' golf team? And I'm like, why do you, I mean, you probably watched, but why do you know that? And so that's <laughs> when I first know that these two were dating, but you probably have a better story than that. How did it all begin? Well, it began, uh, we were just, uh, she was playing golf at Shawnee, I was playing basketball, football, at Elida, kind of rival schools, um, just doing our things and kind of met through some friends, and uh, then when we started the recruiting process, um, going to college, that's when it got, that got hard for us, I mean, that's when God started, we had to put a lot of faith in God, um, where were we going to go to school, where were we going to go to different schools, play college, basketball, golf, who knows where we'd be. So I got recruited by Akron and went up there and she was fortunate to go with me. And uh, she met their golf coach. Uh, my, my coaches introduced him. Um, so that was a blessing and their co coach liked what she saw and uh, got her a spot on the team. And that's when I kind of knew like things is going to work out. I mean, that's when all the faith would pay off. And uh, um, we did, our, we did our things in college, played basketball, she played golf, and uh, made it through. And um, recently just uh, proposed to her on Myrtle Beach on a little vacation. You want to show uh, the ring there? I was Everyone holding, can see it. Yeah. yeah okay, good. <laughs> and I was uh, down on one knee, and I was holding the ring box backwards the wrong way. <laughs> you proposed yourself. And uh, a did, week... A did week, you say yes? I did. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> and a week later, Andy Lynch contacts me and asks me to talk about relationships. And I'm like, oh, man, I don't, I'm holding the box the wrong way. Don't know anything. Start thinking about it. I was like, okay. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Leslie, was that a, an indication of the, of the relationship, holding the box the wrong way? How, how yeah. was communication? Oh, God. I think that he just wanted me to base my decision not on what the ring looked like. <laughs> <laughs> But once I saw it, you know, it was definitely yes. <laughs> so two Division One athletes, you got to balance study tables and class and road trips. What was that like? Communication had to be huge. It was tough because he was a winter sport and I'm fall and spring. So when he's in season, I'm not in season. When I'm in season, he's not in season. So one of us was in season 100% of the time. So it was tough when we go on road trips, just uh, touching base with each other and Stuff like that was tough because 36 whole days for me, I'm up at 6 a.m. and I don't get back till 7 p.m. and I'm tired. I got to do homework, so it's hard to stay in touch with each other. But we made an effort to make sure that we um, talked to each other and communicated. And we we had a little communication issue. Uh, he had to take me to the airport. This was um, uh, senior year. This la this past year, He'd take me to the airport. So the um, night before, I picked him up at about 2 in the morning at uh, his arena. He'd just gotten back from a long trip. And he had to bring me to the airport at 4 or 5 in the morning, so got a couple hours of sleep. I picked him up, and the check engine light was on in his car. I'm like, you got to take me to the airport in the morning. Uh, are you sure this is okay? And him being his 
stubborn self said, no, we're good, we'll make it, we'll be fine. So we get on the highway in the morning, and all of a sudden the, the car just shuts everything, all the lights just shut off, and I'm like, oh my, I'm going to be late for my flight, and we're panicking, and we're just coasting down the highway, not knowing what to do. So we get off, like, the nearest exit. Luckily, we hadn't been on for that long. So we get off. He's pushing the car. I'm doing the steering. So he had to tell me where to steer, and I wasn't doing it right. And it was, it was just a mess. And then he had to go run a mile to go get my car. So he just takes off and sprints to my car. It's a mile away. He gets back a couple minutes later, and we're ready to go. But we had to leave his car there, and it was just it was, it was a mess. But we, you know, we made it. We figured it out. That's communication's key. Key. <laughs> a relationship, yeah. Any, any additions to the story? Is that pretty much well, good? <laughs> yeah, I mean, other than the fact that I was, just got done with basketball conditioning, and I was like, okay, never have to run a mile again, never have to wake up in the morning. Here I am at 4 o'clock in the morning, running down the highway, sprinting, trying to make her fly. So other than that, I was, we yeah. got through it. We we're good. We got, she was on time. We're good. Makes we a good story it. for the Legends Banquet, so we yeah. appreciate that. Reggie, how do you stay close to God during college? Um, the biggest thing is just surround yourself with people. Um, like yourself, uh, that are very religious, and um, to see what they have to say, and I mean, even if you're, they, they're going through the same things you are. I mean, we have other couples we talk to, and uh, we have this Bible study. Um, uh, me and a few of my teammates are, uh, got this Bible study going. We, we kind of just wanted to be among the team, just to grow the team closer. I uh, got Leslie involved, and she got some of the girls' athletic teams there, like the soccer team. So it ended up being pretty big. Uh, like here I am, like uh, hosting 20 people, 20 plus people in our team lounge, and I'm teaching a Bible study. So that's, that's something I, I would see myself doing. I didn't know I was going to do that, but uh, it turned out great. The outcome was good. And, I mean, it was just a good hour away from sports once a week. I mean, we tried to get as, to get as much as we could, and it was just kids that were on the same interest levels as you, curious about God. We were reading the gospel. We were uh, just talking about struggles we had. We were relating Bible stories to athletics and, and what, how we could overcome obstacles in our path. And uh, So that was awesome to see. I mean, that's something I didn't see myself doing, but uh, it definitely helped that you knew people like yourself, that if you had hard times, tough tests, you failed a test, you had... 6 a.m. practices, you're not getting enough playing time, injuries, just stuff like that, people to relate to. So I, that's what I would encourage anybody going to college, getting ready to go to college, uh, either play a sport or just go to college. Just There's, there's, there's people out there, there's, there's groups, there's FCA, there's InterVarsity, there's all over campuses. You just got to look. And once we got into doing all that stuff, it became just a, that much easier college, and it made it just that much more better experience for us. I know for me, the dating process was horrible. I can't imagine what you ladies and guys go through now. Leslie, do you have a, kind of a message for, for women? As you go into the dating pool or you're in that whole process, you know, what, what should they look for? How should they want to be treated? With respect. Respect is a big thing. Definitely, um, you need to have respect from your significant other or else it's not going to work out. And um, you just need to understand each other even though you always want to be right because you know the girls always got to be right <laughs> you have to let your other be right and um so you just yeah everyone not all the time though no not all the time but you you've got to be understanding and you've got to you've got to just be there for each other and if you're both on the same page and um your faith is on the same page you there you'll be great it's gonna go great yep awesome so when's the wedding uh we're going to wait till not next June, but the following. So a little less than two years now, finish up school, get settled, and not stress about any wedding plans and just take our time with it and enjoy it. All right, well, congratulations. Thank Leslie Stolley, Reggie McAdams. Thanks. <laughs> All right, we'll bring up a few more football guys. Kyle Miller from Elida, Zach Dysert from Ada, and Jordan Thompson from Parkway. Come on up, guys, give them a hand. There you go. We had our Legends of Northwest Ohio football camp yesterday, which was an awesome day. Kyle and his dad, Mark, 
another one of our legends, put it together for a second straight year and had 70 or 80 coaches, and it was awesome. So next year, again, we'd love to have smaller kids, 8 to 13, not your size. You're... Anyway, Kyle, how's your voice? Not very good. <laughs> okay, we'll keep it easy. As you look back at last year, what feelings come to mind as you were with the Chargers, you'd get activated for a week. Just take us through those first four weeks of the season and what, what it was like to be Kyle Miller. Yeah, it was wild. Um, I don't think too many people outside of my wife and my family kind of realize what it's like. Um, so w when I got to the Chargers, um, there was uh, four tight ends that had been there the year before me, ahead of me, and I didn't really understand why they brought me in. And then um, uh, when, when I was home during this time before training camp, we found out that one of them got suspended for four games. So I kind of thought I might have a little bit more of a chance to make the team. So we go through training camp. And uh, for the first time in my career, every, every other year I'd been uh, uh, cut right out of training camp and then uh, re-signed to the practice squad. But this was the first year I, I made the 53-man roster out of, the, um, out of training camp. So... Uh, I was feeling pretty good about it. I, I knew um, that Antonio was suspended for four games, so I, I'd at least have four games before he came back, which um, was better than nothing for sure. But um, our first practice, uh, the, the week of game one, um, our starting tight end gets a concussion. So uh, they bring back a, another guy that they had cut to, to kind of fill his spot for week one. But what a lot of people don't realize about the NFL is um, that guy was a veteran, so since he was on uh, the roster week one, his salary was then guaranteed for the whole season. Oh, wow. So because of that, um, when we got two linemen hurt that game, I was the casualty because uh, he was going to get his salary anyway, and I wasn't. So um, I got cut after week one because um, we had some injuries to some offensive linemen. And then uh, week two against the Bengals, um, that starting tight end got another concussion, so they brought me back week three. Um, I fly out to San Diego on a Wednesday, fly to Minnesota on a Friday, play against the Vikings. We get uh, two more offensive linemen hurt. <laughs> Pugsley, got to talk to you about your offensive linemen and their <laughs> toughness. Jeez. <laughs> but um, we had more offensive linemen hurt, so I got released again, and then uh, – and then the staff kind of got offensive staff kind of got blown up at the end of the season so here I am still waiting I guess what were your prayers like during that time um I mean it, it wasn't really as hard as as you may think because I've been through all that I mean I, I've kind of gotten to re to know what the NFL is like so I don't think it was as much why me as much as it is just show me where I'm headed next um I knew that God had a plan, and, and so, so many times I've thought, um, man, it can't get any worse than this, and then um, something great pops up. So I, I knew it was, it was going to be all right, and um, it, it was a huge help having my dad that played in the NFL and knew how it works, and my mom was right alongside him the whole time. And uh, this was my fifth year in, so my wife had, had been acclimated to it. So. And, and luckily, my son's only two, so he, he didn't really know uh, what the cross-country flights really meant. So, um, yeah, I mean, my prayers were just um, just just show me the way. Um, um, I, I know that he has a plan for me. I just kind of want to see it, um, waiting to, to see my next move. Yeah. Jordan, you can relate to, to Kyle's story. As far as the injury front goes, although it wasn't the linemen around you, it was yourself. Yeah, I found myself uh, week two of the preseason. You know, I had a great spring. Well, in 2014, uh, I was here the summer of 2014, not knowing what was going to take place. Uh, I'd been signed by the Lions and just really it was just blessed to be there. I mean, I walked into that facility every day thinking, this is my job. This is awesome. I'm going to make the most of it. And uh, midway through the season, found myself on the active roster playing. And, uh, and it, w it was crazy. What a whirlwind because uh, five months prior to that, I was working a full-time job in Cincinnati, Ohio. And it was like, I mean, things just flew by. And it, and it was just crazy how fast things can change. And 
Uh, so went through the 2014 season, was excited for 2015 uh, because, you know, I had been there a year, I had played, and, you know, I, I was in a position to make the team uh, coming out of training camp. And uh, week two, uh, we were at Washington uh, playing on natural grass, which is, I mean, we don't do very often, uh, you know, in college anymore or in the NFL. And, and it even crossed my mind, you know, I was kind of going out in pregame debating what cleats should I wear. The grass is a little longer here. And, uh, you know, I thought I could get stuck in this stuff. And uh, once you know, in the fourth quarter, I was running down the field and got stuck and tore my ACL. Hmm. And it was just one of those things where, you know, the, the emotions that you have in that moment when you're sitting on the field thinking, my gosh, like, you know, one of the worst injuries, sports specific injuries, you know, one of the most possible, you know, that you could go through. And here I am living it. And yeah. you see it, you see it happen a lot. But, uh, you know, up until that point, I'd been pretty lucky. And so I went through last year, um, you know, I was still on the team, um, did all my rehab up in Detroit. And uh, then, you know, it, it's a business at the end of the day. And so, you know, you, you always have in the back of your mind, you could always get cut. And, uh, so after the draft this year, um, we signed a couple tight ends, and you know you walk into into work, and you're thinking, all right, you know there's not enough roster spots for all these guys. And um, sure enough, uh, May 3rd, I was released by the Lions, and and you know people always talk about God's timing, and uh, you know part of me thought at some point it was going to happen, um, you know because I you just can't have roster spots being taken up by injured guys and. Little did I know, you know, I was released on May 3rd, and that gave me the opportunity to pack my stuff up and come home uh, and spend the last day with my grandfather. He passed away on May 4th. And uh, had, had that not happened, I wouldn't have been home for that. And, and it's, you know, things like that where you, it, it's just hard, you know, th things happen. And, you know, with those things that happen, there's a lot of, you know, you're unsure what's next or whatnot. Um, but God's timing was indeed perfect that, at that time. And uh, it, it was really a blessing to be released because I was able to come home and spend, uh, spend that last day with my grandfather. Yeah. Zach, been a whirlwind season for you as well. I don't know how many teams you tried out for or on the practice squad of. Or did you just leave a bag packed and had frequent flyer miles? I mean, what was that like all season? Yeah, pretty much. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, it wasn't quite the way I thought it would go, but uh, I got to see a couple cool places, I guess. That's how I looked at it. Uh, I got to visit some cool places, uh, see some, meet some cool people, some uh, pretty iconic people, you know, that I've always looked up to. Uh, so it was a pretty neat experience. How many different teams were you in their facility over the last few seasons, would you say? Probably like eight or nine. Wow. Yeah. I had a, like a week straight where I just worked out for like four or five different teams and then uh, just kind of waited to see what happened. Yeah. And then luckily, you know, the last like three weeks of the season, Buffalo signed me, which is like the last place I ever thought I would be. But uh, it, was, it was good, it was good. Yeah, it was a good experience. What, what did you learn over the year, would you say? In, in um, for me, it was more just kind of uh, worry about the things that you can control. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, I was kind of like trying to just do everything. Uh, trying to do too much, trying to like worried about things that I had no control over. So I didn't know why I was even worrying about them. So I'm like, I don't, I don't know what I can do to change that. So just putting my efforts in the, in the right areas and, you know, just doing, doing the things, like I said, that I can control, like being in the playbook and, you know, putting my, uh, my best foot forward, having a great attitude going into practice, uh, you know, just showing the coaches the things that they wanted to see that I was making the right strides. And then some great news in the coaching carousel is Adam Gase got the head coaching job in Miami, the mm -hmm. guy that really was responsible for drafting you in Denver. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when he got the job, um, I actually had a workout with the Bears. So we and him, could, me and him could kind of talked, and he kind of said that he had a plan of some stuff that he thought could work out. And, uh, yeah, luckily he got the job with the Dolphins. Uh, he called me, and I signed, like, that day. And, uh, you know, I – for me, it was kind of like it's working out finally, you know, so I finally caught a break kind of thing. So uh, just trying to take advantage of it. What's that been like being down there with him again? Uh, it's been awesome. Uh, for once, kind of going into an off season, I kind of know the offense. So it's, <laughs> it's nice. And it's even better because no one else does. You know? 
I'm like, I finally can like caught a break. I'm ahead of the curve from everybody. So uh, instead of having to catch up like I thought I would, like I did every other place I was at, so uh, that's been nice. Yeah. Jordan, uh, you told us a story yesterday at camp about your world travels. Uh, what was that that off season like, where you had the opportunity to to see a completely different part of the world? Yeah, I uh, found myself in Australia and New Zealand, and then uh, kind of finished up that trip in Fiji and. I was telling Andy yesterday where we were at in Fiji was uh, beautiful. I mean, we're in the, on this island, and, and Fiji is probably one of the, I mean, we were living off of like $25 a day, and it was three buffets a day right on the beach. Like, I mean, paradise for very, very reasonable price. And uh, <laughs> wh where we were staying, you know, these islands are small. It only take you probably two hours to walk around it. Um, but where the resort is right next to these villages where people are living. And Hurricane Winston had just come through the Fijian Islands about a week and a half before we got there. So everything you see on the news was devastating. And we really didn't know if we could get in or get out. And, uh, and the village where we were at was, was not affected too bad. Um, but there, the, there were a group of kids that came in who were on Coro Island. And if you YouTube Coro Island, Hurricane Winston, um, all of the video came from these group of kids that were there as missionaries on Coro Island. And they got evacuated after the storm. So all the GoPro footage is from them. And they came and they shared their stories with us. And it was unreal. I mean, to, to see just the fear in their eyes that they had, that they were sharing with us. And and, and to think, you know, they, they felt so helpless because you know, they were evacuated shortly after the storm let up and all these people who they'd been living with were still there, you know, and uh, that was just an unreal experience to sit and really talk to them about what they had witnessed. Uh, but then also on the beach, after school would be let out, all the kids from the village would come onto the beach. Well, I was out on the beach and every kid would stop by and say, point at me and say, you're fit, you're fit. <laughs> and and uh, so I went into the school and, and kind of talked to the teachers and, and asked if I could have a little bit of time to explain why indeed I'm fit. <laughs> and uh, so I was able to show them some footage of, you know, the NFL and so forth. And, and we, we had the opportunity to put up, you know, the teachers asked for, you know, can you do some sort of football drills with them? And, and I looked around and very little. I mean, we're talking, you know, dirt floors in the classrooms, just a, a piece of sheet metal as the roof on these schools. And so I looked around the yard and they had a pile of tires. Now there's not vehicles on the island, but they had a pile of automobile tires. And I said, we can use those tires. And so we ran through the tires back and forth like high knees and they loved it. And here, what they do with those tires is they throw them at each other. <laughs> they, that's a game that they have as they go out in the schoolyard and they throw these tires at each other, kind of like in Red Rover lines, and to try to get these tires to roll through. Uh, I think but, some of the coaches in the room just got some great ideas. Yeah. We've got fall camp uh, coming up. Coach Schreiner's shaking his head, so yeah. they're ready. Let's throw but, some tires. But just to see the, ex, you know, the excitement that you could bring to you know, kids that don't even fully understand the opportunities that we have living in this country. Uh, and to, you know, those were some of the most excited you know, kids ever, for as little as they had, they had not a care in the world because they, they, they loved each other. Uh, it was a, it was a, they're uh, very religious uh, Christians on, in the Fijian Islands, so that was really cool to, to witness. And yeah, it was just an awesome opportunity. And uh, Fiji is very reasonable price. If anybody wants to go to an awesome place. <laughs> Did you get a second job there, tourism, <laughs> something? No, no, nothing quite like that, but it, it was cool to explore. <laughs> Awesome. Zach Dicer, Jordan Thompson, Kyle Miller. Give him a hand. Thank you. Your program ends, but we have a special treat. I'm going to get an extra chair as the Columbus Grove football guys come up. We heard about Fiji, and now we're going to hear about Haiti. As Andy Schaefer, head coach at Columbus Grove, and his assistant, Ben Teal, took these three guys. Enoch Jones, Grant Cassidy, and Reed Stechschulte down to Haiti just a couple weeks ago. And they're going to share just a little bit about their experience with us. Yeah, sit wherever. So we'll start with Reed. First of all, how did this all happen? How did you get invited and decide to go to Haiti? 
Well, um, this winter, uh, Coach Schaefer and Coach Teal started doing like these little leadership meetings. Like we were trying to, like our school has been asking for leaders for quite a while. So kind of thought that we'd have some breakfast and discuss some leadership things. And it was, it was cool to have some coaches that like, like you, like some people said earlier, it's like usually just talk about X's and O's in football, but it's, it's more like meaningful when you start talking about your actual relationship with God too mm-hmm. in the middle of it. And so at the end of one of the meetings, he asked the guys, he's like, if anybody's interested in going to Haiti, there's an opportunity to open up this summer. And I've never been on a mission trip before. And so I just thought it was a great opportunity to finally do one. So I mean, I had a blast with these guys, too. Was it because you had a relationship with your coach, that's why you're going to go? Yeah. It was, I mean, I, my parents didn't go, so it, was just, <laughs> so it was just us three guys and a couple coaches and some other people from their church. So, I mean, it was definitely a different experience, and it was, it was much easier because, like, because us and our coaches have such a great relationship. Enoch, what about you? What was it like to, to make that decision to go? It was kind of a leap of faith for me because I'm a year younger than these two and I'm not, I haven't really talked to anybody I was going on the trip with outside of football and half of them were complete strangers. So it was kind of just neat to go and do something I've been wanting to do for a long time. I've always wanted to go on a missions trip and just see how God brings people together and just watch how relationships were forged and just to get close to some people that I've known for a long time. What was the trip like for you, Grant? Uh, it's definitely different than anything I've done before. Like Ed Reed said, the only time I had ever been staying somewhere away from my parents has been like a two or three day basketball camp. So, <laughs> little, never, little, never to Haiti for that. Yeah, no. no, three on three in yeah, Haiti. It's something, usually just two hours away in Ohio, <laughs> nothing thousand miles away nothing like that but yeah. it's uh it was definitely life-changing just to see kind of how wh- the stuff we do take for granted that um some of the stuff how in America we struggle with having like five percent unemployment when theirs is 80 to 90 percent or wow. making something like 500 dollars a year is the average for them how and they're living off of that it's just crazy Coach, what an opportunity for, for you to see these guys grow in a different country. What was that like as a coach to see that? Yeah, it was neat. It was definitely a different experience. I've been a football coach for 20 years, and I've, I've always wanted to get close to my players, but uh, this was obviously a, a completely different experience and, and one that I really honestly wasn't expecting. It was, we, were, we were talking about servant leadership in our leadership meeting, and, and, and I had just been asked to go to, uh, to Haiti and just kind of threw it out there and just in conversation, kind of not expecting them to say yes. And, and they did along with one of my assistants. I'm like, oh, wow, okay, let's go. So uh, for them to go and, uh, and go through that, uh, it, it was a really neat experience for sure. Then you come home off this high. You've seen these guys bond as teammates, and, and you get some, some difficult news. Yeah, um, uh, our trip was supposed to be Sunday to Sunday, and it was obviously something of God that uh, – our trip got moved um, from Thursday to Thursday. It got moved a couple days back because we were home not very many hours when, when my mom sent me a text and said that she was taking my dad to the hospital. And uh, obviously, you never want to hear that. Um, and so so I went, and, and by the time I went from Columbus Grove to Finley, which isn't really that far, um, they had found that they needed to move my dad to Columbus, and that they found a brain tumor. And so, um, you know, had I not gotten back on Thursday, I wouldn't have been able to be there. So uh, my dad actually picked us up. We were kind of joking about my dad and, and talking all kinds of stuff. But these guys just met my dad that morning. And, and, um, and then all of a sudden, he's, he's getting taken in for a brain tumor. Um, that Tuesday, which is the only, um, the only day, it seems like we didn't even have any football scheduled, uh, was the day that my dad was going to go into surgery. And, and the doctor was saying that, you know, take your time to, you know, my dad asked to borrow my computer to, to possibly say goodbye to my kids. And so it was a pretty, pretty, um, pretty humbling experience. And, and I didn't know what would happen. And he came out of the surgery. He's already home tonight. Um, they thought he'd never be able to talk again, and he's talking. Uh, but but I, one of the neatest things that happened was, um, 
Monday night, our, our first football camp, um, unexpectedly, these these guys and, and a couple other guys kind of came came up to me and said, "Coach, I want to I want to pray for you. I want to pray for your dad." And <laughs> me and my assistant coach said, "This this is awesome. Not not only are these three uh, praying for me, but even more people." And uh, so it was it was a neat experience, and, and I appreciated that uh, almost even more than the the trip. Yeah. At FCA, we want to connect. You know, we want coaches who care about their, their students. You coaches out there know the importance you have in your students' lives, and, and you do a great job with X's and O's. You want them to win. Uh, but there's a second dimension that we've heard talked about tonight a lot, about that character and, and team cohesion and how every kid on that team has a role to play and a life when they're away from practice. And then there's a third dimension even that FCA talks about in the heart and seeing these guys' hearts uh, grow closer to God so much so that they're willing to pray for their coach out of their own uh, volition is just so special. And so tonight we just want to challenge uh, everyone out there. We're, we're all walking this journey in life and we're all either going to take a step forward or a step back, a step towards God or a step away from God. And so there's many different ways that we can take that next step. For some, we've never really pursued God. Or maybe we've gone to church, but we've never you know, said, I need Jesus to save my life. I need uh, what we hear these Haitian kids talk about, how they just thirst for God because it's all they have. He sustains them. He gives them food when they don't know where it's going to come from. We heard Jordan's story about how these kids at Fiji had everything washed away, and yet there they were joyous because of the love they have for God and because he is in their life. And so for some of us in this room, we need to say, I want to follow Jesus. I want that love in my life. I don't experience love. I don't experience joy. I'm always looking for my next fix. And I don't want that anymore because I know he can give it to me. For others of us, you know, it's, it's going deeper in faith. It's getting more involved in our FCA group at school or starting an FCA group. Uh, for coaches, maybe it's saying, I need some help. I need someone to come alongside me to, to just listen and to just pray with me. And, and as FCA, we want to be there for you. So I'm just going to have everyone bow their heads here and, and just give about 30 seconds of silence for you to think. And for you to listen to that still small voice, maybe God's saying something to you tonight. Maybe he's saying, I want you to go deeper with me. I want you to accept me as your Lord and your Savior for the first time, and I'm going to change your life. And it's not going to be easy, but I will give you fruits of the Spirit. I'll give you love and joy and peace and patience you'll learn and kindness, things we all want. For some of us, maybe there's more. Just think and pray. Father, you are a great, big God. And we don't think about that a lot because we're here in Ohio and we're just living. And yet we hear these stories of players who have been through so much, of kids in other countries that don't have anything, of dads who seemingly are dying and yet you reach in and heal. Lord, we want that. We want you to be in charge of our lives. We don't want to live just a regular, ordinary life. We don't want to live a selfish life. We want to live with purpose. We want to make a difference to those around us. And so, Lord, I thank you that we can come to you tonight, each of us in a different place in our lives, and say, here I am. I want to take one step towards you. For some, it's saying, I know I mess up. I know I... Uh, I've got all these gifts, and, or maybe I don't think I have any gifts, but I haven't acknowledged the giver, you, at all. I need your help. I need Jesus who died for my sins so that I can have a relationship with you. I can go to heaven when I die, which is awesome, but I can do so much more here and just live for you and have joy and love. I can be a different person. It takes time, but you change me. And so, Lord, I want that. For others, they've that made that decision before, but they want to go deeper. And so they can pray tonight just like anybody else and say, I want to go deeper. I want to take that next step. I want to lead for you. Lord, help us to remember how we're feeling right now. Help us to remember the call you're placing upon each of our lives right now and to live it out. In Jesus' name, amen. On the middle of your table, uh, there's some white cards turned upside down. Uh, we got some pens there too. 
Uh, we'd love for you to fill that out if you want to get on the FCA newsletter list, if you want to connect with an FCA coaches group, FCA newsletter. Um, if you made one of those decisions tonight where you said for the first time, I've been living for myself, I want to live for God, I want to live for Jesus, we want you to check that. If you made a decision that you need to go deeper, you've gone away or you just need to go deeper, we want you to check that too because we want to equip you. We can't do this on our own. These guys found that out down in Haiti. You can't live this life on your own. You're so much better together. I'm so excited to see the camaraderie uh, that they're going to have this fall for Columbus Grove football. So check that box as well. If you need to pray, come up to me afterwards. We've got board members all around the room that would love to pray with you. We are here for you. FCA is here for you. And we're going to be here in the fall for you. And we're going to be here in the winter for you, in the spring. Whenever you need us, you come, you call us, you tweet us. We are here for you. Thank you for being here tonight. Uh, we have the silent auction going on in the back. We'll give another 10 minutes if you want to get some of those items. All that money helps put this weekend on. We say thank you again to all of our sponsors, the Basement Doctors here. I was a big sponsor tonight. Uh, U.S. Plastic Corp. Couldn't have done it without them. But this night, I hope, has changed your life. I hope it has been a chance for you to see I've got some things that I want to do better. And only God can do it through me. Thank you for being here. If you want to bid on the items, we'll announce the winners in about 10 or 15 minutes. Good night.